Welcome to Horror News Radio for January 30th, 2023. Join us for Horror Movie News of the Week and 13 recommended horror films for February 2023. All this and more coming up next. I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this is h &R, the official Gruesome Magazine Horror News Podcast. Back with me this week are the scariest, goriest, bloodiest co-hosts on the net, starting off with the one and only Dave Dreher. Dave, how you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you, Doc? Crystal? Good. Great, Great to spend good. another evening with you talking horror news. Yes. Yep. Yes. How exciting. Hey, also hey. joining us this week <laughs> is Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl. How are you doing, Crystal? I'm great. It's, you know, it's start of a new week and more horror. And it's, oh, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I am I really was just thinking about this. We need some val more Valentine's Day horror, like Bloody Valentine and stuff. We haven't had anything in a bit, right? Mm, oh, yeah. there has been. Yeah. Need a yeah. Cupid Kills or something like that. <gasps> Oh, Ooh, I, like it. I like it too. Blumhouse. There we go. There it mm -hmm. is. We'll option right. it. We'll, 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 yes, option it now. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a big night lined up. We have uh, uh, three news articles and we have 13 films. We have a lot more than 13, but we narrowed it down to 13, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's coming out in February on streaming and in theaters uh, to discuss as well. So hang out for that. But let's start off. With horror news of the week after i make this announcement if you enjoy this podcast which i hope you do please hit the like and subscribe share with a friend button it's easy quick to do and free and all that good stuff and it will help us greatly and help us uh find more horror fans like you yep <laughs> all right let's <laughs> get into the horror news for the week uh let's see what we have um, I believe, Dave, you are up first. Uh, you were a fan of Barbarian, were you not? I was. Barbarian surprised me greatly. I knew nothing about it going in, and it was definitely a uh, WTF film for me, as I think it was for quite a few people. I think it um, was. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed except it quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, except for <laughs> busy liking Skinamarink. Um, yes! so. Uh, but yes, the director of Barbarian, Zach Krieger, uh, suddenly he's a hot commodity. Uh, we got news that his next project called Weapons caused all kinds of turmoil. Um, <laughs> it was getting offers uh, upwards of eight figures before it had it even been taken to market. Uh, but it went to market and boy, did it ever go to market. <laughs> New Line Cinema won the, the, white, the rights of what I... As everyone is saying was an intense bidding war mm -hmm. but uh new line gets it and i'll tell you he has gotten a lot with this uh eight figure the the actual amount was not announced but he got eight figures to write and direct uh, which are more than double of the entire budget of his previous flick so already wow. win yeah. yes that's yes, amazing uh, gu guaranteed green light uh he gets final cut pending a threshold that it will have to be met during test screenings. He's got controlling interest in a back end and, of course, that guarantee of a theatrical release. So I, I, I'm not sure from a film, uh, too bad uh, Christopher's not here, but from a filmmaking standpoint, I don't think it gets much better than that. It's, uh, for your sophomore effort, it sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> nothing is known about weapons, at least that I've been able to find. But uh, if he's able to bring the same surprises, shall we say surprises? We're going to say surprises uh, that he brought us in Barbarian. Uh, it's going to be some must-see stuff. Absolutely. I mean, you got to imagine, you know, it, it's, he hasn't written the script yet. So we're talking, what, a treatment or a, if, if that, or are we, an elevator pitch? What are we talking about? How do people, are they just buying his talent? What are they doing? Yeah, I mean, that must be there. Nothing's really said in anything that I've been read. They said that apparently people were reaching out uh, prior to the film market trying to get in on the deal. And everyone was told, nope, you can't do it until it hits the market, which happened on January 22nd. And uh, for 24 straight hours, what there what is being described as a brief but intense bidding war exploded. Bidding war. 
That's got to be cool. amazing to be a part of that on day, receiving it. It would, to, <laughs> it, would, it would have to be fun. Now he has to. Now he has to uh, pull it off, though. That's the thing. That that's so a lot. Of, I mentioned that's a lot of stress. Now you got to deliver, right? I mean, there had to be at least what a treatment, a proof of concept, something. I mean, you can't just I'm be sure. like, you know. Well, so. you'd say that, but sometimes when someone like makes something that shocking, they want they're willing to bid on it just to get it. You know, sometimes well, it's worth it. Congratulations to Mister Krieger for yes. he has landed, landed in the promised land at least until he uh, puts this one out, and then everyone we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done for me lately? Yeah, got everything to lose at this point. Well, good luck, sir. We hope we we are well. At least two of us. I don't know about you, Crystal, but we're <laughs> eagerly awaiting what he has oh, coming next. I think he. I think the movie was fine. I just don't get. You know, I just don't get why everyone's like, "Oh my god, it was so scary! It was so good." And did you go? Did you go into it blind or at you? Yes, heard I went about into it? it blind. I didn't okay. know anything. Same about way it. here. I didn't know what the, I. I think what surprised me about it more than anything else was it be, totally became totally different than what I thought it was going to be. I but, did. I did like a lot of the concepts. I just. I wish that people. You know, here's the problem. People. People are kind of pussies, and they're afraid of so much. <laughs> and so they kept, all I kept hearing was how scary it was, how scary it is. how. And so I went in like, oh, this is going to be good. And it didn't scare me at all. And so that's, I think, I didn't, it wasn't bad. It was, it was fine. It just wasn't what I was really hoping for, I guess. You well, know. We, we know what kind of films you like, as you mentioned in the previous yeah. one. Back in 1984. <laughs> what film back in 1984 did you like? Children of the Corn. And why and do you like that now? <laughs> I still love it now. I still think the original Children of the Corn is amazing. And if you like the original Children of the Corn, you might be excited about this too, because Kurt Wimmer's redo of Stephen King's Children of the Corn um, has been picked up by RLJE Films and AMC's Shutter. Yeah. And so it will be coming to theaters March 3rd. That's very soon. That's about, That's a month away. Actually, right. considering February only has 28 days, we're basically looking at a month. Um, it's going to have 18 days at the theater, and then it will be hitting digi demand, digital, online, I'm assuming Shutter uh, on March they, they 21st. Really said, yeah, they haven't really said. The, the press release that I got and what I posted up on Gruesome Magazine is just that it's going to be on VOD. Uh, the press release does not mention Shutter. I think everyone's just assuming that it's going to yeah, be Shutter. My, but it I just said VOD. You know... So. It might be smart just to release it on VOD and then release it a little bit later on Shutter. I don't know. My, yeah, and yeah. RLJE does that. I mean, mm -hmm. we were yeah. talking about a few of those in our February movies that you know came out a month ago and then are now hitting uh, on VOD and now are hitting Shutter and in theaters, right? Because it was theaters mm -hmm. for like a week or two. Right. We'll get yep. there. We'll get there. So, so <laughs> this one seems like it's going to take a little different story than the original movie, the original screenplay, um, because it follows a 12-year-old girl in Nebraska who is possessed by a spirit in a dying cornfield. So mm. so I think that's a little different take. I'm interested to see how that's going to work out. I mean, this is, is it, the children of the corn can be really good or really bad, depending <laughs> upon the kids. So, and it's all dependent on that. So I'm really super duper interested on how this is going to go. So is it, is it, it's still based on Stephen King's. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Story, right? mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. No Malachi. Is it Malachi? What's, what's the name that they scream in the middle of the movie? Malachi. Well, there's Malachi. A, Mal Malachi. And then of course the, the actual demon is. Uh, he who he walks, walks behind the rose. The but there's yeah. no mention of uh, either of them. Uh, and they, they did mention it's going to be a reimagining of the story. Yeah. Well, so that, when I was a kid yeah. and I, I heard them saying, he who walks behind the rose, I thought they meant a rose, not rose like in uh, corn. That's embarrassing. I don't know where my little brain, my little child brain came up with that. But yeah. Child brain. Uh, that's that's fun. <laughs> that's so dumb. Uh, well, what's really cool about what's really cool about this is that it's 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 uh, going from streaming, which we previously been told it was going, and it is actually landing in the theaters now. So that's I'm cool. excited about that. Yeah, you know, I could consider. I would consider going to the theater for this. Yeah. I mean, I bet it's going to be really better in the theater. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know. Yeah. 
I mean, this is the second or third time we've heard of a movie that was going to go streaming and now is going to the theater. So, uh, well, well, with all the horror movies releasing at the theaters now and and snatching up some of that money, see, they're getting it. They're yep. starting to realize, oh my gosh, horror's hot. Duh. 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 That's why we're here because it's <laughs> hot. And we love. It. All right. Uh, all right. So some of you may or may not be fans. Dave, of Robert Eggers, <laughs> uh, of The Vich and Lighthouse. I love it. And uh, The Northman, <laughs> right? Northman was his other one. Um, am I right about that? I'm right about that. Uh -huh. He, of course, has been working on a remake of Nosferatu, and news came today that Willem Dafoe is going to reunite with Robert Eggers for Nosferatu. Now, this is interesting for a number of reasons. One, because... He was by far the best thing in the lighthouse. There's a lot of good things in the there, lighthouse, some people think, but he was amazing. He wasn't the only amazing actor. He was amazing. He was, <laughs> as usual. But, but he wasn't the only amazing, but he mm -mm. he he sort high, in my opinion, he sort of hired everything. Anyway, so uh, but he's also played in a, you know, uh in, in a Nosferatu like movie, he was actually nominated for the Academy Award for his role. Um, and what did we say that movie's title was? I already forgot because I always think it's Nosferatu, but it's not. Oh my not. gosh, I forgot. And I had I just looked it up, but um, somebody <laughs> so Dave, we're you, really you, good Dave, at you know, this. I, I, had it, I had it on my screen. I, and I, I, keep, I keep I keep thinking Gods and Monsters, and I know that's it's wrong. It's not Gods and Monsters. I but, know. I, I know that's wrong. Well, well, Dave looks up that for me because we can do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Not Nosferatu, which is going to be at Focus Features, uh, has starring Lily Rose Depp, uh, Bill Skarsgård, and Nicholas Holt. So two Nepo babies. Yes, it's Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård is going to be the yes, Nepo babies from last week. It's, the, <laughs> it's a Transylvanian vampire. Uh, and Depp, of course, is the haunted young woman. Um, at this time, we don't know who uh, a child of vampire. Here it is in the article. Um, Willem That's Dafoe it, yeah. is, uh, I, I, I would wager he's going to play the, what is the equivalent of, uh, Van Helsing in this mm -hmm. Nosferatu tale yeah. or somebody like that. That would be where I would put him, but you never know with this guy. <laughs> I mean, I can't even imagine how this movie is going to be. I mean, it, it's, it's going to be, I, I don't know. I can't even, you know. The original is so good the way it is, but I know that it, this is going to be completely different. I just hate that it's not its own tale and it's technically a Nosferatu, but, you know, we'll see. See yeah. how it goes. Mm -hmm. well, I have faith. Yes, and it would be interesting to see because, you know, he likes to put things in different format, uh, formats. Um, he likes to do slow burn. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he shot this in black and white. <laughs> I I think that would be a good thing. I think that could really work. I mean, and yeah, I'm all I loved the lighthouse. I gotta admit, but it heavily relied on the actors, and mm -hmm. so you know, luckily he has Willem Dafoe, and Nicholas is very good, very good too. So I think that he has two and Bill. Oh, Bill duh. I mean, yeah, obviously, he's... how how did I forget him? I mean, he has. A strong cast. He does. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting to see how Lily Rose Depp does. I'm uh, very on, on, interested in Anna this. Taylor Joy was originally cast, but she had to bow out because of conflict. Because um, she's too effing busy. She's yeah. everywhere else. Um, good for her. Yes. And uh, of course, we want to see as much of her acting as possible. Uh, um, but yeah, Lily Rose Depp has the opportunity to shine here. And... Mm-hmm. Get beyond the Nepo baby thing that you were talking about. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Yep. Uh, all right. There you go. There's our news for uh, Zach Kreger's weapons, uh, Children of the Corn, coming from RLJE and Shutter, And, of course, uh, Robert Eggers, Nosferatu. Now with more William Defoe. Yippee Shadow, <laughs> Shadow of the Vampire Doc. Was the Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, yes. it was. <laughs> Which was a good, was a really good film, by the way. All right, let's move on 
to our countdown this week, and it is 13 upcoming horror films for February 2023. We're going to, we're going to see about doing yeah. this every month as we go into the next month. Uh, we may not find 13 every month, but uh, we did find 13 this month, so that's uh, what we're going to go with. They're not count down by any any order other than the date that they're going Releasing. to be coming yeah. out. Yeah. So I want to hear what you guys think about all this. Uh, the first one on our list is Skin of Marink. Let's change uh, the order here so we can see the better faces. Oh God, <laughs> you sound like you sound like Bill. Bill is always that, like, "Don't put me there." Put Crystal there. Um, uh, of course, we've already reviewed Skin of Marink. Uh, I'm excited to see it again, though. I, I I like haven't seen it since we reviewed it, so I really want to see it with other people and see what they think about it. Yep, and you got to be excited that you know this movie made over a million dollars off of a seventeen thousand dollar budget, yep, and and a very you know small run of theaters with as little mm -hmm. <laughs> as little marketing as possible. It's really kind of remarkable that that's happening. Yep. Terrifier two did the same thing back in the fall, so I think I think that's what you were talking about earlier. What they're noticing with all these movies yep. now going to the theaters, so. Uh, but it's heading to shutter, and I think a lot of people are going to uh, be very interested to catch this and see what it is about. That will be February 2nd. Yay. Very soon. Very soon. All right. The day after that is Knock at the Cabin. M. Night Shyamalan uh, adapting a, a book. What is the book, Dave? Uh, the Cabin at the End of the World. Yes. Oh. Um, he's... <laughs> he, he, it's not an original thing from him, so that's interesting. <laughs> from M. Night, uh, the cast looks fantastic, and the idea of what it is the second trailer that came out, um, uh, like six weeks ago or so, was really intriguing. As we get more information about the, uh, the, the apocalypse, I guess, that could happen, the edge of the apocalypse, as, as you said. Uh, what do you guys think of this? Yeah, whatever. Ah! I I haven't liked anything of Shyamalan's in a while. I mean, I think he's a good filmmaker, but I think he, you know, when he first came out with stuff, he relied too heavily on the twists. And it caused people, I think, or caused me to have expectations. And then I don't, I, yeah, I don't know. He's it's, still uh, he's still having to live up to those expectations. And yeah. for the past few films um, since, uh, what, the... Uh, I'm trying to be invited. No, that wasn't it. The, the one with where the grandma and the grandpa were all wackadoo and all. I can't. Is that the old? Name of them. No, visit. no. The visit. Okay. The visit. Yes. The visit. Okay. That from from then it kind of been an M Night Renaissance, and I've been enjoying his films since. Maybe then. that's maybe I need to catch up because I I feel bad because I feel like I shouldn't feel that way because I did like his films, but then it just they became so disappointing, and I. That's a that means he's kind of a victim of his own, <laughs> his own success. success. Yeah, yeah, and that's unfortunate because I do think he's very talented. I mean, I I've never seen anything and didn't like it. I just ah, I don't the expectations expectations are everything. Yeah. What about you, Dave? Well, I love the book. The source material here is going to be really hard to screw up. Uh, the oh, book good. is amazing. So uh, and all the advanced word I'm hearing is that uh, the movie is equally as amazing so uh, i'm actually looking very very forward to this and i love uh, you know this is one of those kind of weird mashups for me because i'm a big disaster movie fan yeah movie fan so this kind of brings those two worlds together uh and if it's half as good as the book it's going to be academy award stuff oh, oh interesting wow. Whoa, what, that's... what he uh where he goes with it the book's great you can't find the book anywhere now i mean oh, it's uh, like in bookstores, yeah. I mean, Amazon still has it, but like, if you want to like run out to your bookstore and get it and read it quick before the movie hits. Do they yeah. have an on Audible? There's no Audible. Damn. Uh, yeah, there probably is. I'm just I've been looking for it in bookstores because I want to get the the movie. I have the original. I want the movie tie-in edition, and it's sold out everywhere. I was just oh. out today looking for it. Actually. Wow, very cool. Yeah, uh, that's coming uh, the third of February. Also coming the third of February. There's quite a few actually. Is Baby Ruby. Uh, if you're a Kit Harrington fan, and I know a few of you out there are, this might be the film for you. Uh, it's uh, written and directed by Bess Wall. It also stars Naomi uh, Merlant as Mama. 
<laughs> uh, tightly scripted world of a vlogger and influencer unravels when she becomes a mother and noted player uh, noted playwright best bowls feature debut so okay chills you to the bone it says Okay. Like that. Okay. Like that. Mm. <laughs> that is setting it up for failure right oh, there. No, no. That's right uh, up there with horror epic for no. Yeah. yeah. There you it's go. It's like <laughs> <laughs> immediately that makes that turns me off and makes me not want to see a film because they never live up to that. That's just a fact. <laughs> well, you're making this recommendation hard to hard to go by. Um, no, no. Any new horror movie is is where is you know, I mean, even bad no, horror. No, it's, it's, right. it's, it's fair to 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 weigh it, it's fair to weigh it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> baby, baby <laughs> movies can work and not work. It would be interesting. Yeah. I don't know much about this. Mm -hmm. It is coming out from Magnet, uh, Magnolia, that group of, uh, uh, it'll be good in the VOD. So that is coming Friday, the 3rd of February. Also on Netflix that same day is Viking Wolf. I kind of like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's known as Bacon goofing. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And it is supposedly, and I'm going to get this wrong, Norwegian's first werewolf movie. It, well, it can't be the first, right? Like, it can't literally be the first, right? Or maybe the first that's, like, universal or, you know, worldwide, maybe? Maybe, maybe. Because that uh, would be uh, wild. They're giving it that air quote, you know, label to it. But uh, it is a Norwegian horror film uh, i'm well I'm, I'm in i mean you know i'm i'm word let's do this yeah directed by stig Svensson. i'm not going to try that again uh <laughs> it says failed uh just moved with her parents to a small town after her mother has a new job in the lo uh, in the local police after a student is killed brutally at a party they all attends she becomes a key witness was the killer an animal a wolf or a like <laughs> so let's let's be real after troll i i am excited about these norwegian films i think wow they might really know maybe they waited so long just because they wanted to make it really good there you go there yeah. you go i like it mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. um this is coming to netflix bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. all right up next is they wait in the dark uh, this is coming from director Patrick Ray. Uh, I love Patrick. <laughs> uh, Amy, a young woman, is on the run with her young son, Adrian, from her abusive ex-girlfriend. When the past rises up to haunt them, they must confront the forces threatening them from both outside and in. That 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 doesn't tell me enough. So I mean, it looks good to me. I, I mean, I haven't seen a trailer. Did he release a trailer? I haven't yeah. seen it. If oh you man, can, I missed it. You can see it on our own site. It's oh, you can. Okay, yet. perfect. There yeah, we go. That's what you need to do. I like the poster. Simple. It's a drawing, isn't Very it? Simple. Uh, oh wow, it might be a rendering. Yeah, yeah. it is. Like I'm. I don't want to get up too close, but like I'm like. That looks yeah. cool. It's a, it's, a, it's a scene in the trailer, though. Oh, okay. So see, I'm failing, but I mean, typically, I liked uh, I liked Patrick's last movie, the Lisa, Lisa, Lisa yeah, one. I yeah, Lisa. I am Lisa. Yeah. Arbor, so Arbor, Arbor Demon was good. We all, I think, everybody loved Nailbiter. Nailbiter, yes. Uh, that is coming. That's coming February seventh on VOD. So check right. it out. Uh, coming out on the ninth of february is the outwaters uh in theaters beginning february 9th which is weird because that's a third date but hey um this is a found footage film is in oh. what's your that favorite found, found footage. footage found footage yes this has got a this one's got a huge buzz i haven't uh, we got screeners but i haven't watched it yet, i'm so i'm excited in this one yeah, yeah, so look for our review coming the week it comes out. Yes, it's written and directed by Robbie Van Fitch, and the synopsis is four travelers encounter menacing phenomena while camping in a remote stretch of the Mojave Desert. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Mm, interesting. We all die in the dark, yeah. dark, 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 dark. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the trailer is uh, it's pretty intense, I will say. I yes. Will say. 
All right, coming out the same day, uh, February 9th, on Shudder is Attachment. This tells me nothing. I know nothing, but I like that <laughs> font. It's it's really, it looks like it says Attachment. Yeah, it does. I like it. it and it's, it's hot it, pink. It's so it's wild. What do, you, what do you think I said? Well, we knew you said Attachment. Okay, okay. We're just, he's it just talking like about the font, font, the font, the font. Yeah. Font. Like yeah. Attachment. <laughs> Okay, written and directed by Gabriel Beer. Gis Lason. Oh, boy. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, just uh, let Gabriel, it go. Gabriel BG. Yes. <laughs> um, this film is, let's see if it's, uh, it is Denmark. It's in Denmark. Ooh, Danish. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Coming our way on Shutter. It says Maha, Maja, Maha, however you pronounce it, M-A-J-A. A Danish uh, has-been actress falls in love with Leah, a Jewish academy, academic from London. Ooh. Leah suffers a mysterious seizure, and Maja, Maha, says her name, returns uh, with her to London. There she meets Leah's mother, Chana, a woman who could hold dark secrets. Ooh, such spoopy. Is, such is the attachment. <laughs> All right, coming out the 10th of February. God, they're just piling them up. Is Disquiet. This is Friday. Jonathan Reese, Reese Myers is in this, obviously, as you can see from the poster. I, I love him. He's a phenomenal actor. I mean, I I really think he's highly underrated. Well, he's he's undone himself, but he's... Oh, building, he has? Okay. He's building it back, yes. He, Maybe he that's the problem. I was like, why is, do people not use him? Because everything I've seen him in, he's he's freaking fabulous, I yes, think. Yes, he, okay, he has, that makes has, more sense. He has, he has struggled, uh, okay. but he is, he is building back his career, and we know that people can do that. Uh, and people can change, and, yes. you know, I totally believe in second chances or third or whatever. <laughs> I don't know anything about it, but I do know I like him as an actor. And I like this little mummy kid. Oh, my goodness. Uh, mm -hmm. This is another one that we will be reviewing later in the month. Uh, written and directed by, by Michael Winnick. Uh, after a near-fatal car accident, Sam, played by Myers, wakes to discover he is trapped in an abandoned hospital by a mysterious and sinister force that have no intention of letting him leave. Ooh. Wah, wah, wah. Sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Also coming out on the tenth is uh Way Sarah. Oh Way Sarah the Bone Woman. Yes. Coming from XYZ films, I believe. Um written and directed by Michelle Garza uh Carvara. Okay. Severa, Severa. Okay. Um, uh, also written by Abia Castillo and mm. Patricio Saez. Yeah. I, I'm butchering that and mm. I am so, so. Mm -hmm. uh, the synopsis is Valerie has long dreamed about becoming a mother. After learning she is pregnant, she expects to feel happy. Yet, something is off. Ooh. Spine chillingly terrifying. Well, and I love the photo with that, considering, because the spine thing, that's kind of spoopy. Uh, XYZ, and it looks like it's going to be heading to Shutter at some point, but right Yay. now it's going to be OD. So maybe we'll mention it again in the coming months. Probably. <laughs> any any word, uh, Dave, for about this one? Uh, no, I, I don't know anything about it. So. I just told you. I just told you. Yeah, yeah other, other than what you just told me. <laughs> All right, up next. Uh, this is also coming out on the 10th as she came from the woods. <sighs> nice poster. Come on. Like, that poster is classic. I love it. Cruelest it's summer ever. Ever, ever. This is a horror comedy. I was about to say, um, totally. Yeah, in 1987, <laughs> a group of counselors accidentally unleash a decades-old evil on the last night of summer camp. Of course, when else would you do this? Uh, written and directed by Eric Bloomquist, who we've enjoyed his films in the past. Uh, Co-written by his brother, Carson Bloomquist. Blumquist. Bloomquist. Bloom, Bloom, Blum, Bloom. Blum. It's Bloom, isn't it? <laughs> it's, I would say. I don't know. I'd say Blum. I know it's Blumhouse, but I don't know for sure. It's probably Bloom in this case. <laughs> uh, his uh, partner, Adam, uh, not partner, meaning that his creative partner, uh, Adam Wepler uh, is also in the film in a supporting role, but it also has William Sadler, who's like a character actor we like. So 
Okay, so for me, I think this is your guys and girls and couples out there. I think this is your Valentine's horror choice. Is it? I think so, because it's still a horror comedy. So for those who don't really love all that horror horror, I think this is the one. Like for something new, you know. It's, I'm it, yeah. looking forward to it. I'm and it's just right it. before Valentine's. So, you know. I would say Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> you might not be alone then, that though. You might not be alone. Um, I was thinking, what what was the film uh, that we really liked from him? Why can I not come up with the name? I mean, we've liked quite a few of his. Um, but there's one in particular that I'm thinking of. He, oh, gosh, he's done so a lot. Um, Oh, that's because that's his acting thing. Uh, Ten Minutes to Midnight. That's the movie. Oh, yes, I, yes, I loved you. it. Sorry about the delay there. Um, and we've also liked uh, Night at Eagle End. In oh, yes. And the, see, I think, okay. So the one thing I have to say about this actor is, I mean, this director, writer, director, I think that he gets such great performances out of his actors. Mm -hmm. Like I, like some directors are not, you know, not actors, directors, but I think this, this person freaking brings out the best, perf I think, I, I mean, yeah, I think he gets, so this should be fun. It should be mm -hmm. fun. Looking mm -hmm. forward to it. All right. Uh, speaking of Winnie the Pooh, that's up next. Uh, this is coming out the 15th. We're halfway in the month and we only have two films left after this. This is crazy. It's all front loaded. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is heading to theaters for at least two days, maybe more. This ain't no bedtime story, it says. Um, if you haven't heard about <laughs> this movie yet, uh, where have you been? You've been hiding under a rock? Because this has been one of the things that <laughs> been, uh, uh, we've been talking about quite a bit uh, in the horror community is these films that are taking these uh, seemingly innocent properties and giving them a horrific twist so so this director also <laughs> said um recently that this movie will push things even further than terrifier 2. that's what he said oh that's what the director promised <laughs> I'm, sorry, I, I'm, sorry. I, I'm sorry i sneezed i sneezed sorry <laughs> Yeah, I don't necessarily <laughs> believe that myself, but I mean, I think maybe he's thinking gore overall, perhaps, as far as, you know, just well, let's, how, but. Let's put it this way. I hope he's right. I hope he's right because, wow, that would be awesome. Uh, Reese Frake Waterfield is the director, writer and director. He, um, based on characters by A.A. A. Milne, yeah, <laughs> uh, loosely. Uh, <laughs> it's only going to be, I think it's only being Winnie the Pooh and, uh, uh, Piglet. Piglet, yeah. yeah. Not going to be any of the others. Um, I, although I think I saw it. I think they for, they leave a grave for Eeyore. Or Eeyore, Eeyore. Grave for yeah. Eeyore, yeah. <laughs> Man, can you imagine if Tigger come bouncing along? That'd be awesome. Um, Dave, comments? You know, we've been waiting for this one for a while. I mean, it's been like almost a year. Feels uh, like it's it. Had, but it's, had, it's had on again, off again releases, and it's supposed to be coming the VOD, and then it don't. So, yeah. I, I, I believe it when I see it. Mm -hmm. well, I, think you're, I think you're going to believe it. I think you're going to believe it. It's coming out. Uh, yeah, it says it follows Pooh and Piglet mm -hmm. as they go on a rampage after Christopher Robin abandons them for college. <laughs> it's so dumb. I love it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, we, you know we're we're going to be. Yeah. We're yeah. Out. All right. Better be. The next one coming to theaters uh, is Get in Line there, uh, Crystal. Cocaine <laughs> Bear. Uh, oh, come on. This this movie. How, how can we not fall in love with this? Directed Look by at Elizabeth. That poster. So Elizabeth pretty. Banks is directing this, uh, written by uh, Jimmy Warden. I don't know what he's done, but hey, we'll figure that out soon. The cast includes uh, Carrie Russell, Aiden Enrenreck. Um, uh, um, there's a whole bunch. I'm not going to go through them, but I am going to mention Ray Liotta. This is his final. Of course, role. yeah. And um, yeah, looking forward to see this. Uh, this looks amazing. It looks funny. It looks gruesome. It looks um, thrilling. 
maybe not scary, but I think it will uh, definitely raise. The I head. don't know. I mean, I think that I think it it'll have a lot of tension, mm -hmm. like tension scares, you know, because I mean, the chase is to me that like, oh, wow. You know, I mean, it is a bear. If you ever, I mean, <laughs> it leaps into you know. the back of the van. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I this is this might be my most anticipated of the bunch. I'm really looking forward to Cocaine Bear. I love that poster. I might I mean, have to. I can't say enough good things about the poster. It looks so cool. Yeah, I might have to take uh, Tom Hanks up on uh, you know the drink, the uh, the diet cocaine drink. Have you heard about that? Where you what? mix, oh, yeah. diet, take diet coke and mix it with champagne. It's called diet cocaine. No, what is it good? I don't know. I'm going to find out when I watch Cape Cane Bear. <laughs> All right. Diet Coke and Shane. It's funny. What's, what's funny is uh, uh, the the director, Elizabeth Banks, did a uh, uh, one of the social media outlets. She, she created a thing where she mixed it and drank it and said, oh, yep, he's right. <laughs> so I loved it. Uh, all right. Up next wow. is our final, our 13th film. And what better title for the 13th film is We Have a Ghost. This is heading to Netflix. Uh, the trailer has just come out. Uh, do we? If we don't have it on our site, look for it soon. Uh, written and directed by uh, Christopher Landon. Dave, one of your favorite directors. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah. Based upon Ernest, written by Jeff Mana. Or Manoff. Mana. Mana. M-A-N-A-U-G-H. You tell me how you say it. Uh, the cast includes, check out this cast, um, Anthony Mackie, David Harbour, Jennifer Coolidge. Oh, my. Yeah, yes. this is getting, getting better, right? Uh, 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 Tig Notaro. Oh, I love her, too. Yeah. Faith, Faith Ford. Sorry. Oh, wow. Name, Faith Ford. Um, is that the blonde chick? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember that name. Yes. Uh, but David Harbour is playing the Ernest from the title of the book, who is the ghost. So it, it is a, a horror comedy for certain. Uh, probably heavy on the comedy. Good. I would imagine. Uh, any good. any any yeah. thoughts about that? Have, is it, have either of you caught the trailer? Mm -mm. You don't do trailers, do you, Chris? No, because <laughs> then it tells me too much. I like to go in blind. I like to not know much of anything. And then I can just watch it and not have, I try, try and not to listen to anybody's opinions about movies too, because of how tainted it makes me. <laughs> well, the, the trailer <laughs> has a fun vibe to it. It, it, it reminds me of, uh, oh gosh, what, what is that ghost movie that uh, Jackson made back in the 90s with Michael J. Fox? <gasps> Frighteners. Yeah, Frighteners. Ooh, I love Frighteners. Frighteners. Jeffrey yeah. Combs. Mm. Yes. So it reminds me a lot of that because the ghosts kind of look that way. Um, uh, that was actually a perfect horror comedy because it actually was very funny, but also had very scary moments. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, there you go. Holy cow. That's our 13 upcoming horror Yay. movies for February 2023. Yeah. Oh, man. Let us know in the comments which one you are most looking forward to. For me, it's Ooh. Cocaine Bear. Do you guys have one off the top of your head? I think I, well, I don't know. I really do want to see Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. But I I think that uh, She Came from the Woods might be. Uh, Ooh, very mm -hmm. nice. Dave. And if I hadn't seen Skin and Marie, it'd probably be that. But yeah. Dave's going to say Skin and Marie, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, sorry, so I'm, take, I'm taking the day <laughs> off work. I can stay home and watch it again. <laughs> Sarcasm, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, um, yeah, I think Knock at the Cabin for me is probably that, but the Saltwaters has me intrigued as well. So nice, yes, those, those nice. Two. I, you guys make me happy. Thank you. All yeah, right, oh, good. Yeah. Uh, we have some feedback. We'll get this, and we're oh, yeah. running uh, really late on time. But the feedback is from Chad White. He says, "Great show, everyone. I had to get out my pen and paper. I'm mm. going to check out Possession." For sure. Thanks for the recommendations. And we recommended 13 films streaming. Right okay. Now. So I responded to this and yeah. somewhere in my little brain again, I don't know, I guess it was my kid brain. I thought he said possessor and not possession. <laughs> and so I was totally wrong. And I actually realized it and I was like, I need to correct it. And I haven't corrected it. So just know that I realized my mistake, Chad, and I'm sorry. 
but you're smart. Yeah, he's got it. I'm like, I have no worries <laughs> about him. He knows. Oh, yeah. uh, man. Well, check it out, Chad, and let us know what you think of Possession. Yes. I hope he liked it. Mm -hmm. uh, I bet he did. Uh, well, we want to thank you for hanging out with the group crew. Be sure to hit the like, subscribe, share with a friend, all those buttons. Please yes. do. Dave, Crystal, thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks yep. for having us. Thank you, Doc. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's say goodnight. Good night. Good night.